Hello, everyone. Since this is either a highlight, a standalone book, or the first episode in a series, I'm jumping in to remind you what the rules are for this podcast. First rule is, no real people stories. That means that any details from our own lives are merely anecdotal, we do not read books about real people, and we are not reading historical fiction. The second rule is that we are basing our analyses off of how the author treats characters and what they put them through. We are not judging the accuracy of the trauma, the accuracy of any actual conditions that may be portrayed, nor the authenticity of a character's reaction to that trauma or that particular condition. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The hosts are not trained professionals, and their opinions come solely from personal experience. In this episode, we discuss fictional depictions of trauma and violence that may not be suitable for all audiences. Please take care of yourselves. Specific content warnings for each episode can be found in the show notes. Events in the media are discussed in approximate order of escalation. This episode contains spoilers. And I'm Robin, and this episode on Books That Burn, we are discussing Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. From the publisher, we have the book synopsis. After receiving a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin begging for someone to save her from a mysterious doom, Noemi Tabueda heads to High Place, a distant house in the Mexican countryside. She's not sure what she will find. Her cousin's husband, a handsome Englishman, is a stranger, and Noemi knows little about the region. Noemi is also an unlikely rescuer. She's a glamorous debutante, and her chic gowns and perfect red lipstick are more suited for cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing. But she's also tough and smart, with an indomitable will, and she is not afraid. Not of her cousin's new husband, who is both menacing and alluring. Not of his father, the ancient patriarch, who seems to be fascinated by Noemi. And not even of the house itself, which begins to invade Noemi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. Her only ally in this inhospitable abode is the family's youngest son. Shy and gentle, he seems to want to help Noemi, but also but might also be hiding dark knowledge of his family's past, for there are many secrets behind the walls of High Place. The family's once colossal wealth and faded mining empire kept them from prying eyes, but as Noemi digs deeper, she unearths stories of violence and madness, and Noemi, mesmerized by the terrifying yet seductive world of High Place, may soon find it impossible to ever leave this enigmatic house behind. I love how atmospheric the synopsis is. It's like a great (laughs) start to the book. Uh, just a for- little bit of foreshadowing, just a just yeah, a touch. Just, yeah. Also, it's one of those where, like, you reread it after reading the book, and you're like, "Oh my goodness, like, if they oh, said the no. thing and the stuff." <laughs> um, that's what that means. All right, so, uh, this fun. It's always fun times. Uh, fun with quotation marks. Uh, of in sarcasm. When torture is a minor topic, like you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's gonna we're be a great good... book, yeah, and hopefully a, a fantastic episode when when that's our minor topic. So there, I want to I in this discussion, I think it would be nice to not spoil what is <laughs> causing. Yeah, no, like this agreed. thing. Yep, we're gonna um, try, guys. We're gonna try really gonna hard. Best. Yes, to not give the end of book spoiler of what is causing a particular thing. Just trust us that when a character expresses the sentiment that they cannot leave, they are being more literal than Noemi originally thinks. <laughs> um, and so Francis uh, can't, so we've put this as torture because there's physical pain um, and possibly mental pain. There's a pain and not great stuff if Francis tries to leave. And implicitly, he is not the only one who would be affected in such a way. He's just um, 
the one that Noemi is talking to and is trying to persuade to leave or help her leave. And whereas the others are more on the program and not trying to fight against the uh, the will of the, of the patriarch. Yeah, the will of the patriarch. That's a good way to put it. Yes. Uh, and partly because we just have Noemi's perspective on this, it it's very late in the book. Yeah. Um, it's after, I. it's like around the time of the reveal that we're not specifically going to spoil before Noemi finds out that like, no, like Francis is not kidding about yeah. this as like a thing. Um, and it kind of, <sighs> there's a lot of ambiguity about how safe it is for Noemi to like Francis and to care about him among the people in the household. And yeah, which makes it like uh, harder to know how seriously the reader should take this as an issue. And it also takes a while before it's clear how much Francis really genuinely is in emotional distress at least some of the time because he can't leave and the rest of the time can't really think about how he would like to leave and can't there's a lot of like resignation to his situation yeah manipulation oh yeah and also absolutely manipulation but like it even in his more coherent moments he is resigned <laughs> to this being the situation to him yeah. being stuck he has had no no even concept of like okay this could be different until she shows up and says hey why don't you leave and he's like ah, well okay <laughs> yeah like we we could have called this house arrest uh we but we did call it torture because it's, it's painful yeah and it's not like an outside force saying you are not allowed to leave the place where you live it's also like the um uh emotional abuse of his yeah. family at not letting him leave and like as a collective both trapping each other and feeling trapped to various degrees by the situation yeah it's like yeah later topics will deal a bit more with like the very horrible kinds of codependency that are happening oh my God. Uh, in here yeah um but no, the yeah. the one thing we wanna we wanna really nail as far as um as far as it being traumatic. Um without spoilers, um mm -hmm. Francis is fighting his own body and his own mind um to leave, to help her to do anything that his father doesn't want him to do. And yeah. um, there's a couple of times where we get explicit, like, descriptions of his own, like, physical reactions to this. Mm -hmm. But the the important thing from a, a, a trauma-written perspective is that we, it's, it's very, it's, it's visceral in a third-party witnessing kind of way. Um, because it is, Noemi is our only point of view. But we know <laughs> by the end of the book what Francis is going through. And it's it's laid out in a way that makes it more um more gratuitous than it could have been. Yeah, like especially when later um Noemi becomes impacted by some of the same forces, and so that kind of makes it clear how much Francis has been going through this entire time Yeah, when our point of view fi character finally gets a little bit of it. And also, I think part of a reason to talk. It's it almost it's almost a little bit fridge horror when we find out from like, oh, Noemi's sure. experience. <laughs> You're just yeah, like, oh, like, no. Oh, no. This is what it's been like for Francis the entire time. Because like with with Noemi there ends up being like a lot of things entangled into the way that she's confined yes. because there's like 
there's racism and there's sexism and more pointed misogyny and like there's a bunch of things but with francis the part of the family white guy it kind of like pulls away those other complicating factors for noemi right and leaves it with like just the stuff that isn't about who he is in terms of identity beyond being part of the family and it's still awful and he's still stuck even without those other complicating and exacerbating factors but yeah it yeah it's absolutely fridge horror um yeah getting to the end of the book and finding out the reason that all of this is possible Um, because the reason all that's happening is because there's some characters that are really really awful but the thing that makes it possible is a very cool spoiler that i really like and it was it was interesting like because i i i you know read the books pick and then we pare down and like figure out we're actually going to talk what books we're actually going to cover and so for me for an episode it's this is pretty much always at least my second read and so rereading it knowing what had been happening with francis this whole time yeah no it's absolutely for a horror uh to come back through and realize how long certain things were going on and like explanation for how he is as a character is that he's just under this immense psychic pain or numbness on to our second topic which is incest now and not the kind where their concepts are gods and it ends up being fine no not like you know Uh, under the pendulum sun we is the last time we had this as a topic i think yeah and that this is very different than that was it was this before or after it's at least probably one of the more memorable episodes where we've talked about it i don't remember if it's come up as a minor thing in anything since then but yeah like that's I believe what you're alluding to, where no, it was like it more wasn't. ambiguous and weird. Oh, oh, what were you thinking of? Um, I'm blanking entirely on the name of the of the book. Well, that's extremely useful. Yeah, it is. I'm <laughs> Let me gonna, know if you think of it. I'm going to try to think of it. Yeah, so there's no ambiguity about whether this is incest. Um, the Inheritance Trilogy. Oh, you're right. right. That's what I was thinking of, where they are gods and concepts and there isn't any actual genetic material and it's fine. No, you're right. You're right. We did talk about the Inheritance Trilogy. I think Pendulum Sun might have been after that one. I'm not sure. (laughs) Yeah, we've this is our third episode where we've had incest as a major topic. And this one. Yeah, those other two, there were complicating factors. This isn't complicated. It's just um it's just gross uh and this isn't about like should third cousins do no 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 no. no. this is like brother direct marrying siblings sisters, direct nephew and niece or marrying nephew and uncle. both sisters like um yeah and then because there are um early on there's the ouroboros as a symbol um and this uh, reminded me of the the way that um, my high school English teacher discussed Oedipus, which was to say that sometimes it's not a family tree, it's a family wreath. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is one of those situations, and it is there. There's even like, so the they, family has portraits of their uh, ancestors and current people, and like the, one of the first things that our main character notices as she walks in is that they all look identical. Yep. She literally could not pick them out of a lineup if they stood next to each other. Yeah, and like the 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 people try to like kind of slow play it a little bit to hide that that's what's happening because first it's like, "Oh, those are both my wives." And so it's like, "Oh, okay, you have a type, you married similar people." Right. And then there's the reveal of, "Oh no, no, those wives were sisters." And, and my then, sisters. And then it yeah. turns out that they were his sisters, right? Yeah. And we'll we'll deal with like the other 
half of this um grossness in the uh third topic because our third topic is going to be uh eugenics um so there's like it gets worse (laughs) it gets worse it does get worse so just sticking on the incest bit of it this family has a thing that they would like they have a trait that they would like to keep in their family ah there's the eugenics bits but (laughs) <laughs> anyway, they have a trait that they would like to keep in their family, and they have decided that the best way to keep the trait in that family is to keep only in the family. Um, oh, and, and also cannibalism, by the way, which we're not even covering as a topic because it didn't even make it to the top of the list. Oh, yeah. No, we... Fun fact. Like, yeah, we could have had cannibalism as our minor topic and decided not to. But just, you know, as a general, is this book for you... Um, please check <laughs> what the we're content looking at. warnings on this yeah. one. Like, usually it's like, oh, you know, we we figure you know to check the content warnings. No, seriously, for this one, it's a it's a great book, but it it goes hard on the topics that it covers. And yes, ah, uh, so it's so well written. Just like ah, uh, thematically, the way like the. And all this is like tied up in in colonialism and the exploitation of the people in the town. And so there's this like, they're keeping everything in the family in the most horrific and literal of ways. And treating everyone outside of their family as disposable. And we'll dig more into that in when our eugenics topic. But it there's kind of like a yeah, the slow, slow reveal. Of, oh, yeah, they look alike because I married both of them. And it's like, that's not how that works. Oh, uh, they're siblings. Okay, that's weird, but not too weird historically. I mean, like, this is set in the 50s and the marriages took place in the late 1890s and early yeah. 1900s. So it's like, okay, like, you know. Some people did you, that, sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm sure that even still happens now. Like, someone, like marries someone and then that person dies and then they end up marrying their sibling like that um sorry not their own sibling they they end up marrying the deceased spouse's sibling like that's a thing that doesn't have to be creepy that doesn't have to be weird but these three people were all siblings it was a brother and his two sisters um and it is not presented with any softness or any attempts at redeeming it because the reveal that that's what's happening is just part of the building horror of this uh, excellently, excellently crafted novel. I do want to point out, by the way, because this is not a title or a cover or any, there's literally nothing from the outside of the package that tells you it's this kind of book. This is a horror book. This is not a fun adventure story. Um, and that may be clear from the topics, but like, I do want to emphasize that because, you know, there's some book, like, I own the Cat Who series. We've talked about that on this, on the show at one point. Like, you know, there's a lot of mystery books and a lot of like horror books. You can tell what it is from the outside. This one kind of sneaks up on you in a way that's really good writing, but it's also a little bit like, if you don't know what you're getting into and that's not something you're comfortable with, this book is a lot. But also, if you go into it knowing that it's a historical fantasy horror novel, it's 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 what's implied by where it's on in the story graph on its right. shelf. Right. Um. Yes. I, I. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I think part of what's happening is the cover evokes a particular thing in a genre that neither of us tend towards generally well and and the title the title makes it look like it's gonna like uh, honestly no joke when i Mm -hmm. when i first picked up this book like because you've read it before i had not i thought this was going to be a romance novel (laughs) like from the cover and the title i thought it would yeah that's what i thought it was going to be because that's kind of in our like very you know in the very in the in the publishing context this is presented in that way and the title doesn't disabuse you of the notion and it's not (laughs) it's not at all romantic no but i I just want to point that out because there's you know there may be people who are listening to what we're saying and and want to check it out and i just want you to know like by the way that's what this is yeah 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 um and it is 
<sighs> so good. But yeah, um with the incest, it's got a it's like it's tied into the themes of consumption and exploitation. Um because Yeah, very much so. Like most of uh, it's 50-50 whether each individual instance of uh, instance of the incest that is a difficult sentence um <laughs> it's like 50-50 whether each instance is even like fully consensual especially given like a lot of coercion and some um, there's like a particular influence that is a spoiler oh i was assuming that, that none of it was consensual honestly yeah yeah like even this one that we know of where it's between cousins like one party like they they never are close and one of them like um tries to leave because of it like yeah i mean no, I, probably- I would argue even the initial like brother marrying it's- his siblings we find out about is from the flashback we get portrayed to be non-consensual like i i would argue that, that none of it is yeah that none of it is and also because of circumstance inherently none of it can be i think that's true i was i was just thinking of like you know if everyone is drunk legally no one can consent it is not exactly <laughs> that but no. it, it is a similar situation in terms of the degree of autonomy um and yes. actual decision making that everyone has access to the bad actor in this case being the one who is magically getting everyone drunk in this metaphor um yeah and i really think that's like most of this topic there's not like a lot more layers to it it's just kind of this gross thing that is happening i mean the other layers actually are the are our third topic that we'll talk about but yeah but i also think that like the consumption and colonization that are part of this um family of rich people who have minds well they're not rich anymore (laughs) Well, sorry, they were rich. <laughs> they, they used to be, yeah, They used to be rich, and they're living like they still are, and they're... Ah, okay, no, I'm having thoughts that definitely go in the next topic. Yeah, these are, yeah just, this is not this topic, I think. <laughs> it's not this topic, but th- the theme of um, yes. consumption that begins with this topic then leads in and, and is continued elsewhere. So let us pick up this in our third topic. On to our third topic, where we can dig into the eugenics, which complement the incest. (laughs) This is that fun kind of book that this is. Okay, so the... So there's this... um, by interesting, I mean horrifying thing where uh, you have this um, family uh, from colonizers here to exploit the local populace. And they the the family is trying to keep themselves pure and they decided that incest was a good way to do that spoiler I, it's not. actually actually hey robin um, we may not yes. be able to avoid spoilers in this topic because yep, that's fine. i was gonna actually quibble with that wording it is not that the family is trying to keep themselves pure it is weirdly enough that they're trying to keep themselves okay the right level of polluted yeah exactly so <laughs> sure I'm good with i don't think we can talk about this without spoilers three. Yeah, y'all, this is the end of book, absolute reveal spoiler. We're not going to detail it. We're not going to sit down and explain it, but we're going to reference it. And that's just how this is going to go. Yeah, and um, it's, it'll change how you read the book if you know that this is going on. So yes. if this this is your last so, chance to go, wow, I guess there's eugenics and colonization so, yeah. in this book. TLDR <laughs> for our discussion, most likely. Here are the things you need to know before we actually talk about it, if you're skipping and not talking, not listening to this. One, the old man is a racist eugenicist. Two, uh, our main character is pretty knowledgeable on the topic and is able to push back against him. And so I think it's handled really well. And that may She's affect our care begin. rating. She's studying anthropology. Yes. Three, um, the eugenics is weirdly enough not actually related to their genetics. It's related to something else that they're trying to 
build up enough levels of something in their genetics. Three. Um, they absolutely, and this will probably factor into our content warnings, they have their own equivalent of the Habsburg chin. So it's not a chin, but they have like same face. They all have, they all look very identical at a certain point genetically. They got a family look. Yeah. Um, and not in a positive way. Uh, three, this leads to sterilization and stillborn children. Four, and this is the last one, um, they struggle as a family with quote unquote keeping their genetics pure and needing to inject quote unquote new genetic material so that they don't just die out from sterilization. Now I want you to do Nicole's bullet point summary for all the topics. So it's nice. Thank you. <laughs> um this is my <laughs> this is, <laughs> arguably this is what i want when we discuss every topic just spread out <laughs> i don't know if that was helpful um okay so yeah that's nicole's bullet point summary that's what you need to know about this topic as far as knowing whether or not you actually want to read this book now we are going to talk spoilers because it's more complicated than that and it's magically more complicated than that and that's so skip now if you don't want to hear <laughs> Yep. See us in the wrap up if you if you don't want the spoilers. Okay. So right. <laughs> they are trying to stay exactly the right level of poisoned by mushrooms <laughs> in their blood. Yeah. They're, and- they're trying to build up literally the spores of the mushrooms that get embedded in their G- in their DNA. They're trying to get as high a level as that as they physically can. Yeah, and I'm I'm betting it's not technically like DNA, DNA but it's like in it's every talked cell. about like it is. That's how they like almost refer to it, which I think is interesting. Well, okay, so the the thing that they're trying to pass on in the DNA is their ability to be mentally compatible with how full of mushrooms they are. Right, Anyone which is a genetic. That's a DNA thing. Yeah, yeah, but right. Sorry, it sorry. It like you were saying the mushrooms are in their DNA. It's their ability to. I not was die I was joking. Mushrooms. I was joking okay. that the mushrooms are in their DNA because that's how they talk about it. Hey, that could have been it. That's <laughs> that could, not quite. yeah, that very well could have been it. <laughs> That's uh, not quite it. No. Yeah. So the eugenics is that they think they are totally super duper awesome, and that <laughs> everyone, ev- yeah. they, British and white, uh, are super duper awesome, and that everyone else, Mexican and brown, is terrible, and mm-hmm. they they literally referred to. Um, workers who died in their minds as mulch yeah um, which is like it that's very horrifying and racist and now the main weirdly enough, is like that is horrifying uh, weirdly and- enough there's a slight caveat to mm-hmm. this they refer to them as mulch after they buried them in the cemetery to help the dirt be better dirt right so it's worse it's it's worse yeah they have they there's a separate cemetery and like okay Having a different cemetery for the people who work for you versus the people you're in that are in your family, that's one okay. thing. But having it be that every that you don't care at all and literally don't even think of your workers as human, that's the yeah. horrifying bit. Yeah. Um, also that you had enough people die that you needed a job only cemetery <laughs> is extremely horrifying. Um, that is to me more horrifying than the idea that these would be like separate places that doesn't have to be terrible all of the other yeah. stuff definitely definitely is yeah um yeah and- now, the the twist of the mushrooms i told robin this before we were started recording that actually caught me off guard because the entire book i was just in my head mentally yelling vampire 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 <laughs> vampire and then it wasn't <laughs> and like um you know, I with the same face stuff, I was 100% ready for it to be, oh, this is just me again in a new portrait with new clothing. And it's just <laughs> us over and over. And then it wasn't that. Oh, no worry. Um, it's worse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, but as far as like the, the interesting thing about how this is written with the with the eugenics talk is that like our main character has several discussions with the nesting consciousness because I just rewatched that mm-hmm. episode of Doctor Who. And um, he, uh, she has a, has a discussion with this with the the older the old man of the family currently at the moment who um patriarch yeah there we go thank you um who 
basically ha- they have a co- they have the conversation two or three times about whether or not inputting bad dna into your good dna makes it stronger <laughs> and he tries to engage her in this debate like three different times yeah, and every single time her answer is hey that's not how dna works and nobody is inherently inferior and you need to stop but his, his whole push at her is to try to get her to meet him on this topic as though it is worth discussing and spoiler alert that ends up being like the thing that he is trying to do with getting her to stay and marry into the family because he considers her dna bad her as a Um, subpar person yeah so she is he he treats her as like exotic and beautiful and so part of what's happening is because they've done a whole bunch of incest um they keep being um either stale Ill. or infertile or yeah yeah they they some combination of the mushrooms and the incest is making them uh unwell it is making them crazy i i do not use that lightly they are being driven mad in different ways whether literally yeah. or just in a in a very in a very you know, stereotypical kind of sense <laughs> But yeah, not, like they're, not as they're, a stereotype, but it's that mar- those markers. Yeah, like there there's someone who attempted to kill her entire family and didn't quite succeed, and because okay. she didn't quite succeed, we now have like this and like yeah. there there's there's it's portrayed. Okay, arguably, as I think she snapped. is the most. Yeah, oh, that's not in, right. absolutely not what happened. She's fine. I yeah. okay. Here's actually, I want to push back on this. I don't think. I think that the madness is just them lying i don't think anybody actually snapped i think people who are not compatible with the mushrooms are having problems basically extended psychedelic problems Mm -hmm. with real ass memories but i don't i don't think anybody is actually like mentally ill yeah i I think i think they're just formatting it that way because this person rebelled and they perhaps just, would prefer to say it engage it treats characters as crazy, but there's yes, so much gaslighting that's going on. Yeah, that that's what I want to make sure know. we that's what I want to make sure we touch on because it, the characters are being treated that way, but I don't actually think that's what's going on. And I'm not saying that that would be negative in a yeah cosmic sense if it was. I'm saying that I just I I think they're lying. <laughs> No, no, I I said that, and then I was like, hmm, they're probably not actually all the way mentally, yeah. Um, but, like, it, it engages with it as a topic, and, like, part of why um, Noemi is even there is because her cousin has become um, unstable. Um, and I do think unstable, like, not not even euphemistically, like, I think unstable is a good term for what's happening. I, I don't. Cousin. I think she's just dying. I think, think she's, she's just, just dying. I think well, she's that's just dying. Not a very stable condition. No, but um, it's not a mental condition either. That's it's why a physical I didn't say one. Mentally unstable. I know, but you said unstable, and I, I don't think I don't. I just think that she's just not reacting well to the spores, and and not in a like. You think it's bad for her to be poisoned by mushrooms? Well, that's my um, point. Is I think <laughs> it's poison and not yeah an actual change in who she is. You know what I mean? Oh, Does no, that make sense? <laughs> no, but I, I think that if something like... I, I know you're not explicitly you saying that, but like I think that the connotations to some in... of the words are that. And I want to be very clear that that's not what we're saying. Is that... Sorry, what I mean is that she is mentally and physically destabilized by the conditions that she's being forced to live under in a way yes. that makes it harder for her to deal with reality and makes her... See, I think um... she's dealing with reality fine. <laughs> Actually, oh. I, would think, I think she's doing great. Yeah, she's dealing with reality fine. It's the hallucinations that are giving her the trouble. I don't I don't think she's hallucinating. <laughs> sorry, halu- she's This seeing- is this is where I'm I'm saying like I don't actually think um, she's hallucinating. Sorry. I think she's seeing I think she I, is being poisoned and also having the same kind of dreams and memory visions that the other characters have. Sorry, let me say I was accepting hallucination as a good term for the dreams imposed on her by the mushrooms. I didn't mean it in See, a I think they're real. Like, I don't think I, I I don't think they're hallucination. Does that make sense? Like <laughs> I thought they were images put in her head without passing through her eyes, 
which is to me the standard definition I mean, of a hallucination. Okay, so in that context, I just want to be clear: dreams are also hallucinations. Yes, we're going by that definition. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, she's she's seeing stuff that's not literally in front of her, and the mushrooms put it there. Um. Yes, that is. I I would. That is how I was treating. Well, this. Agnes put. Them Sorry, there. <laughs> my aphantasia may be playing into this a bit. Um. <laughs> Well, I just I just want to be careful because yeah. I don't want us to use words that are typically used in a historically abusive context. That's a good point. And I don't no, want them I, I, like because that's not what we're saying. And also, even if we use those words, we're not meaning them. And but we don't have substitutions. Yeah, so. which is the hard thing. But no, like she she's seeing things that are not literally there, but they are put there by a particular source, and her being traumatized by this happening is making it harder for her to deal with things that aren't a result of the mushroom and the combination of all of these combined with the gaslighting uh is very hard to deal with and that's and and also combined with whatever treatments she's being given because we're not actually given details on that but she's being quote-unquote treated by the distant ish so to speak relative uh who's playing doctor and like we don't actually know like she could also be being medicated in a way that is harmful to her yeah and we just don't know real quick back to the eugenics uh, oh yeah that is the topic that is their topic yeah so back to the eugenics um so the family thinks of themselves as superior but some things have not been working whether that is because uh inbreeding has has generated um a propensity for mental illness or if it's just that being poisoned by mushrooms is bad for you one of those some combination of those they have decided that the solution is to sometimes bring in new people uh and new blood against their will and in the most um derogatory manner possible yeah like we need you as breeding stock because you're exactly the right amount of inferior. Yeah, because you are the plus- most compatible with our mushrooms, which we are going to allude to and not actually talk about because yeah. that makes us feel like this is not. <laughs> it also like- plays into like um, eugenicist ideas that yes. inferior people breed more easily. Yes. Um, yes. It's it, it, yeah. It weirdly yeah, walks this, around that, but it it uses and I'm this is not a this is not on the negative on the author just to be clear. No. It it uses the incest as a way of getting into that topic and kind of blaming the incest for it, but like yeah, those ideas are brought up and kind of thrown at our protagonist as an insult. Yeah, because it's also like multi generational incest. It's not like one and done every once in a while. It's yeah. like a particular pattern. And so now they're trying to bring in um, someone else in order to hopefully have the next generation be more stable. Um, and I, I, I like um, Noemi as I like the way that she like deals with having to talk to these people about. Yeah, <laughs> like she's like, oh, this is the kind of person who would have head measuring calipers. Yeah, and she like sees another thing is like, okay. They have multiple sets of these calipers. <laughs> yeah. Like, she she pretty quickly understands. Yeah. She is a student on her way to with. being an expert on this topic. And <laughs> she's dragging them mentally, which is very good. I feel like we have thoroughly trounced this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, I have, I'm just going to mention it here. Just in, I'm going to, I'm going to explicitly say it in the wrap up, but also, but not without spoilers. Uh, my favorite thing is going to be just her smoking irritating the house. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I love that so much. Uh, it's so funny. Which, and like, just with just a note about like language I've mostly I've used in the section. It's really, really hard to find words to talk about mental illness because mm-hmm. all of the really good idiom like they descriptive she is not, real ass accurate she is terms. not stable because of what's happening it's like ah d- damn it the word unstable has been like wheeled euphemi- wielded <laughs> euphemistically in like yeah. really bad ways and i'm like right but she's like literally not able to deal right. with like Which, yeah just, we just need to clarify that we're not yeah like that's not what we're saying 
No. Like, she's just being poisoned is what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also the mushroom is alive with a real ass brain that it's using <laughs> to talk to her. Like, th- that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, sure. Maybe it's a hallucination, but that's not a negative thing. She's actually getting a real oh, no, mental no, no. message from the living consciousness. No, so, like, and, yeah. and even if I say she's seeing things, well, that feels even more dismissive and euphemistic <laughs> than just right. calling it a hallucination. And like, right. yeah, it's... No, she I is. She, this, is this is why I call it getting. She's getting a message from the mushroom. That's what's happening. But it's not. Mm. It's it's real. It's a real message being really given to her by a real living creature. Like yeah. that's what's happening. But and her. But it, part of because she doesn't know about the mushrooms. Part of her experience of it for so. Long oh yeah, her experience think, of it for sure is very like yeah, her experience and har- of harmful. it is to think that she's going crazy and yeah. understand them as hallucinations, and yes. And so if you don't finish the book, you will think that she was spending most of it hallucinating. Um, yeah. All right. On to the wrap up. <laughs> Sorry, this one topic is so long. We're just so glad to be able to actually say things that are not spoilers because there are spoilers, but we warned you. All right. Wrap up time. Hi, I'm Matt, a.k.a. Stormageddon, and I'm the host of CPOV Autographs at CertainPOV.com. It is a bi-weekly interview series where I interview folks from all over the arts, from writers to comedians to magicians to musicians, even actors, historians, podcasters, pretty much anyone who's willing to chat with me for a little bit. If you like interesting conversations with even more interesting people, go to CertainPOV.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, music is life and life is good. On to the wrap-up and ratings for Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. For our gratuity rating for torture. Um, This is not so, mild because we get like some pretty almost visceral descriptions, I think. Yeah. Do you think it's moderate or severe? I'm not sure. I think um, I want to almost say in context, it's mild, but that's not really helpful. It's either yeah. mild. Okay. So, okay. I, I don't actually think it's severe because we don't really, it's, I don't know. Okay. It's at least moderate. It's probably not severe. There are other I, I think, things. Yeah. In that's, the book that's the problem. That- is like yeah. if you strip away those other things, this is just a moderate thing. If you include the context for it, it becomes severe, and I just don't actually know how we want to rule that. Um, are there other? Is there other torture other than what happened to this main character, such that torture in the book is just severe? I mean, there's psychological torture, and also she's yeah, like, being kept the there, and she's being fed things. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I yeah. Think, I think I'm going to go ahead and say severe. Like, we focused on okay. the torture in a particular context for a particular character, and yeah. since we can't confirm that even that one is moderate, um, yeah, I think that's we fair. Go okay. All right. All right. All right. So, so I know we for try Francis. to keep, I know we try to keep to exactly the thing for the topic, but. I feel like this is a good this, way this of one is hard. ending it. Yeah, yeah, this one's hard. Um, there's so much that's <laughs> interbred I- with each other. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Anyways, All right, yeah. uh, Interwoven. I'm done. Uh, no, All right, so uh, it's 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 difficult. <laughs> yeah, but I think that one's, I think it's severe. And then the incest is, um, I think it's severe. Oh, very um, much so. <laughs> Yeah, the incest is definitely severe. Impact on the characters and <laughs> as the description, the way the topic works. Um, um for eugenics, eugenics is also eugenics, severe. <laughs> yeah, definitely severe. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, this book is a lot, which Hello, is fine. Can we have a third conversation about how awesome eugenics is. What if we didn't? What if we didn't like, do that? What if like, you what didn't, if didn't make me that, go through this with you? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Uh, mod, um, Interrelated integral, interchangeable, people. irrelevant. Yeah. I think the torture is integral. I agree. Because um, otherwise they could just leave. I think both generally and specifically. Yeah. Like this character, if he 
been able to leave, he wouldn't be there to help her. And the book would That's be entirely true. different. That's true. And if everybody could leave, then the book wouldn't happen. Right. Exactly. So it's, yeah, definitely. Uh, incest is horribly, horribly interchangeable. Interchangeable? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, no, you're right. This could have just oh, been no. a magical thing and not a physical one. And instead. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It is interchangeable. Oh, that's horrifying. It seems it, it worse is. that it's interchangeable. It is. And you're like, going to hate this too. Eugenics is also interchangeable. Oh, no, absolutely. No, the eugenics is interchangeable. The eugenics, I think, is important for like broader themes of the text with like exploitation yeah. and, and colonialism. Yeah. Like that's all wrapped up in it. Yeah. And, I, and the eugenics um, and the incest support each other. <laughs> yes. But they're both interchangeable. Wise. Yeah, they're interchangeable. It would be a different book that maybe shouldn't have the title that it does if they had been swapped out for something else, perhaps. But the the enough well, of the plot beats could stay even. I, no, if I, I don't think the title would change. Motivation. I don't think the title would change. But I, you're right. I think it would. It would. It would change it a little bit, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't destroy the story. Like there's magical no. alternatives to this that exist in other books. So yeah. Um, yeah. all right. the combination of these does give it a very particular character yeah, feel that is yeah. yes um, yeah. care rating I, that's what I'm thinking of the atmosphere would be disrupted oh, okay yeah that's fair but atmosphere and is not is plot this is such an atmospheric book it, it, I agree but, but also still- atmosphere is not plot and yeah so. for this particular ranking we do tend right. to care more about the plot than anything else but I, right. I do my, I would like to point out that it would disrupt the atmosphere. No, okay. that's fair. Um, care rating. Treated with care. <laughs> the torture, I think... <sighs> I think it's treated with... It's Enough. not treated with no care. Mm-hmm. And it's not treated with just straight up care. And I think the increasing layers of horror make it... So that we cannot just say it's just treated with care. Because it just builds and builds no, and no, builds no. and builds and builds. But I do think it's enough because also the way that it builds, if at any point you're like, nope, I'm out. You've got the chance. Like, yeah. You can just, you're like, I you don't have like the ability this. to just jump ship. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, because, you know, I've read books where they dump like 10 things in the first three <laughs> pages and I'm like, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Where, yeah. This is where the first 10 pages are. I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> No, this isn't this isn't like that. Um, this eases you into it. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually. I I agree. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with enough. All right, for the incest. No. No, it's not eugenics. The- no. <laughs> yeah. None. None yeah, care. No. Intentionally, none care. None care. Left beef. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. None. No. None care. Left <laughs> pizza with the. Mm, toppings um, that I won't mention. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> moral directionality, <laughs> so, yeah. pretty clear, actually. <laughs> Weirdly yeah, no. enough, this is incredibly clear. Yeah, um, it's super clear. Uh, <laughs> it's cl- it's clear in a this is a horror book, and we're going to terrify you because you know this is all bad kind of way. Yeah, and like e- the th- even like the the complicating factors aren't they aren't like not moral moral complications they're They're just plot they're just like problems our main character has to solve that's all right there there are things like well if we do this it will have there could be problems because i am a woman in a misogynistic society which will not view my actions in a particular light which doesn't change what what she thinks is the right thing to do it just changes what consequences might happen yes and i i really like that nuance um but this is definitely yeah this is really clear um that it's 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 very messed up and uh she would like to leave now (laughs) <laughs> um for most of the book. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. yes. All right, point of view for no the Emmy. trauma and aftermath. It's, it's all just no Emmy. Emmy. Uh and she does I think the book does a really good job of like her being observant and like paying attention to other people's mm. 
uh, experiences. So like, I, it's no Emmy, but it's that's not in a way that makes it feel like hyper like focused on only her and nobody else. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um. And there's also a, a thing that lets her know about events that happened before she arrived, which yes. is used really well in the narrative. Yes. Um, I appreciated that. That lets it still be her perspective, even on these older events. Yes. Because we have like her reactions to them separated from it, their original moment in like a cool way. All right. The trope spotter is kill it with fire. Uh, it would be a spoiler to tell you what they killed with fire, but they, they, <laughs> they kill something. They kill they kill something with fire. And it's, it's pretty great. All right. What was your favorite non-traumatic thing about the book? <laughs> there are no non-traumatic things about this book. Um, I've actually been struggling with this. Do you um, like her clothes? Eh, I don't oh, okay. do clothes. <laughs> yeah. I don't care about clothing unless it's <sighs> not comfortable clothes. on me. I can't picture them. It's a real, we're a real. Pa- I, I, <laughs> I can picture them. I just don't. Oh, no, I remember what I was going to say. I said this in part three and then I forgot it because I said it already. Um, I love her smoking as a mm, defiant mm-hmm. gesture. And then also it has narrative implications that I just really enjoy when they show up. I think it's great. Yeah. I, I think in general also just I like her. No, you can't tell me what to do. I don't care if it's your house <laughs> attitude. And I think she's correct in this instance that the things that she's doing are like, no, they they don't have the right to tell her no. They don't have the right to tell her to not ever talk during a meal. Like, come on. Yeah. They could revoke um, hospitality. They have that right. They're not gonna. They could have. But that's as yeah. far as their agency goes. And the fact that they try to continue insisting on how to moderate her behavior i think she's fully 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 justified um so i i like that i think it's written really well in a way that doesn't take away her agency yeah even though i can't picture any of the clothes i like (laughs) the way that it says what she's wearing and why Mm, she's wearing it yeah Um, because as someone who can't picture them i need you to tell me why even though it might seem obvious, I need you to tell me why <laughs> this physical detail of surroundings or color matters. And yeah. so saying that she's chosen to dress up to like make a particular statement to them, even if she doesn't know whether or not they will take it like that, to me, is what I want <laughs> with uh, physical descriptions. Uh, and I really liked how this did that. And also, like, I like clothes, I care about clothes, and so, like, hearing what she, or reading what she picked, and I I did the audiobook for this reread, so I'm saying hearing what she's deciding to wear. Um, It was cool. It was, I I liked it, and hopefully those who like 1950s fashion in uh, Mexican Elite will also... uh, appreciate this on a level that i can't because i can't picture it but it was fun and i like it um yeah you know it's a good book when i like a visual detail in a yeah book. <laughs> like uh, it takes a lot for that to be my favorite thing um but i really liked how this handled it so uh thank you so much for joining us for this discussion of mexican gothic uh we hope you enjoy our episode and oh one final thought like- actually mm-hmm, about my yeah. favorite thing i'm doing a second one which is not super um precedented i just want to mm. say i just want to compliment the author it's hard to make a horror book that i have opinions on <laughs> <laughs> i just yeah. i have that that i don't have the thing in my brain that gets scared at horror that's just not a thing that happens to me um and there's pro- p- probably a bunch of reasons why that's true. But uh, I-, I have a visceral reaction to some of the topics in this book, just like, oh, gross. And like, that's hard to do. So congratulations. Good job. Yay. But yeah. Uh, right. so Anyways, thank now you. we can close out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. If you read this, uh, let us know. Say hello. Uh, tell us what you think about this. <laughs> Yell into the void with stuff. us. Yeah, yell into the void with us, and uh, we will catch you next episode.
All music used in this podcast was created by Nicole as Heartbeat Art Co. and is used with permission. Our transcriptionist is Heather. You can find her on Twitter at MamaDragon20 or on TikTok at MamaDragons underscore Den. We're proud members of the Certain Point of View network of podcasts. Check out all the Certain POV shows at www.certainpov.com. Please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash books that burn. If you can't wait for the next episode and need even more book related content in your life, check out our book review blog reviews that burn subscribe to the fortnightly newsletter or follow us on the story graph you can contact us by email at books that burn at yahoo.com and find all our links contact info and social media on our card books that burn dot c-a-r-r-d dot c-o don't forget to subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts and remember some books burn you